Okay, we left off last time with the quiz example, and our quiz example, if you remember, was sort of halfway there as far as being able to handle uh, multiple questions in the quiz. So what our goal is for today is to make it so that it completely handles multiple questions on the quiz. So I'm going to download the example. We're going to start editing it. And I'm actually going to, I don't know, I, I was going to say I'm going to do this backwards, but I don't know if that's a correct way to say it. I'm going to do this starting with the server-side component first. Largely because the server-side component I can make the changes to and sort of get it out of the way. All right, the server-side component is, in, in Ajax applications, is relatively simple. Its job is really to provide data. The, the hardest work is done on the client side, as far as the most programming goes. The client is responsible for making a request, sending the request, and then dealing with the results. So it seems like, it seems to me the logical thing to do is, well, let's get the, the server-side piece out of the way and then we'll go and worry about the client and we can focus only on getting the client done. If you remember from last time or the time before, you might remember the answer to the question, well how can I, how can I test it if I don't have a client. Well you can test it by simply typing in the URL and the server will respond to it and it will show you if you get the expected results or not. So here we go, let me download this. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this stuff in an include file. That is, I'm going to put the questions um, for the quiz in an include file. That way, we only have to make the change in one place should we ever decide to change the number or the type of questions or whatever. So, going into Notepad++, I'm going to simply go and copy this out, cut, we will go create a new file. You can't see any of this. Yeah, right, right, right. My goal, by the way, is to be caught up on all grading by the end of this week. I'm actually not doing bad in this class. My Java class is one that I'm still a little bit behind on. But I think I have a plan that I can get everything done this week. And I hope I can finally take off a weekend day and not do anything except maybe check email. But yeah, I was I was grading until kind of late yesterday. So yes, it is definitely a Monday. Living that crazy professor life, up all hours of the night grading and all right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the two arrays, I'm going to put them in their own include file. That way we don't have to worry about them being consistent. You know, if it's only in one place, it can't be inconsistent. So you're referring to the fact that 
Exactly, yes. It's, it's in the client and it's also in the server. So if we had it, um, if we were to change it in one place and not in the other, then bad things would happen. All right. So I'll go say, uh, save that as... questions.inc and then now I will include that reasons that I was going to do the server side first is that we're, we're actually most of the way done with the server anyhow. If we look at this, what it's doing is it's looping through and it's looking for a thing on the query string with the name of answer followed by a number. And the number starts from zero and it goes up until one less the number of elements in the array. Again, with arrays, typically the numbering starts with zero, so element, the first element in the array is element zero, the second element is element one, the third element is element two, and so on. So in other words, if I have two questions in the quiz, it's going to be looking for answer zero and answer one on the query string. All right? It's going to be looking for answer zero and answer one. Because this loop is going to plug through, and it's going to plug in the value for i, and i is going to have a value of 0 and 1. And it's going to get the correct answer, and it's going to do its thing. So let's save this, and let's move everything over to the, one second, let's move everything over to the server, and then we'll test it. Yeah, question? Given that you're, I mean, I just saw how you, Questions. Yes. Would you have to go with print array since you're going to be kicking out multiple Y's or multiple N's? No. Uh, I, I won't have to do an array because if you notice, I'm looping through that. So I'm going to be printing out a Y and an N for each trip through the loop. Each trip. Right. So as I loop through and I look at each one in turn, if the answer is correct, I'm going to print a Y. If the answer is incorrect, I'm going to print a no. So, that's why I don't have to print out an array. I'm printing out each one. It's, it's looking at the first question, is it right, outputting a Y. Looking at the second question, is it right, outputting a Y or an N. All right, so let's look and see what the correct answers are. The correct answer is 6 and 12. All right, so I'm going to go up on the query string, and I'm going to type in lorraineccc.edu. Oh, no, I'm not going to type that in. Localhost slash grade.php question mark. And what's it expecting? It's expecting answer 0 equals something six and twelve okay and ampersand answer one equals twelve again let's look at the query string because this is going to be important later on when we get to the client side The URL, the name of the URL that we're calling is grade.php. The query string is everything after here. And what are we expecting? We're expecting an answer for every question. And the answer, the first part of the answer is named answer. And then the second part is a number that starts with zero. So answer zero, answer one, and so on. 
The ampersand is used to separate the different things on the query string. All right? So that tells the browser this is the first answer, or it tells the server also, and this is the second answer. So that's what I want my URL to look at, look like. So if I go and press return, I'm going to get, drum roll please, I'm going to get absolutely nothing. All right. Hmm. I wonder why that is. Well, we could speculate on that. Would it on the client side you would have to construct a span or a section or some sort of receiving vessel for that second? Well, we're not we're not we're not even touching the client side yet. Oh. We're simply running the server side script. And the server-side script is not outputting anything. So what do we think is going on here? I have no clue, right? And, and you probably don't have a clue either, all right? I could stare at the code and see if I could figure out what is wrong, all right? And I see what is wrong already, but... It would be better if we went and if we find the PHP any file and enable errors. Because remember, this is written, this code is written to suppress errors the way it's written right now. So I'm going to go in and if I remember somewhere down here, Do a search. <coughs> Everything that starts with a semicolon is a comment, by the way. So we, we can ignore those lines. Those are just explaining the purpose of the any file. Okay. Here is the one, here is the item in question. Errors off. And the reason for that, again, is I, I think I mentioned in previous classes that it is possible that people um, can use error messages to help them hack the system. So a lot of times when you get into a, a production environment, when you're finished with it and you deploy it on the web, you want to turn those error reports off. But we're developing, so we're going to change it to on. Now, it's probably not going to let me save this. So I'm going to probably have to save it on the desktop. save it there and then I'm going to go and move it over into where it really belongs which is program files C program files PHP v 5.5 and I'm going to replace the any file in there with this All right, we look at this now and unexpected four. All right, so we got an error message and we know approximately where the error is. All right, so you can imagine that this error message doesn't tell you exactly what I did wrong. All right, but at the very least, this error message points me in the right direction. So I can look at around error five. It might not be exactly in error uh, line five, but it's around line five. So I can look at and analyze and figure out what's going on there. The point I'm making is with any sort of debugging, take a systematic approach. Look at error messages. If the error messages are not enabled in PHP, then enable the error messages in PHP so you can see exactly what's going on. 
I see too many students just try things over and over until they happen to hit on some combination. And that is um, a very brute force way of doing it. And with, in many cases, it's not going to give you uh, a, a, a quick or even a good um, um, outcome because sometimes there's two or three problems and you change something, doesn't work, you change it back, you change something else. Well, it might be a combination of those two things that you change that is causing the problem. So at any rate, we're going to look at around line five and that's line five. Well, it doesn't look anything wrong with that. Oh, I forgot a semicolon there. All right. So I'm going to put the semicolon in there, save it. Then I will copy it back over to my server and be ready to go. So, now we go and try it, and it gives us yy, all right? I got them correct, right? Because it was 5 plus 1 and 8 plus 4, I think. Does that mean that it works? No, let's test other conditions. What if I say 5 and 12? It gives me no one y. What if it gives me, if I say 13 and 12, or 5 and 13, rather? It gives me no no. So kind of looks like my server side piece is doing its job. Except for one thing. Um, I would like to separate these values by commas. Why would I like to do that? Well, if you remember back on the client side, we do a split. All right? And typically we take the, the string that comes back from the server is simply one long string, which is the entire answer. So everything the server returns is put in one string. We need to break that down, that long string down into its individual pieces. So for example, the client is going to see an n. Well, actually n is the results of the first question and the second n is the results of the second question. We need to separate out that long string into the two little strings. Or if we had 100 questions, they would go in turn. It would just be one long string of 100 y's and n's. We need to separate them out into each individual one. So I want to put a comma between them. So let's go and let's try to put a comma between it. And we could try a few things. One thing I could do is something like this, print, comma. going to get what? Could it you after like the, the, the last parentheses of Y or N put that comma in there? We, we could. Let's talk about that. Let me see why it is not working. L let me get, let me figure this first and then we'll oh I know what I did I think I moved the I think I did the move in the opposite direction It says 922 and it's like 926 now. All right, here we go. There we go, and we get the commas after it. So it runs through, it prints, it prints Y or N, and then regards it prints a comma after it. Now, that's probably
probably okay, but you know, we only want the commas to separate them. We don't want that last comma after the end. So, what I can do is I can wrap this in an if statement. So it will do it every time but the last time. So the last time, I want to do it every time but the last time, so I put an if statement in to say if i is less than whatever the count is minus 1. And that should do it for me. And now I should have a comma between them, but no extra comma hanging off the end. And again, that probably won't cause any problems, but I want to be absolutely sure. So now I go and run it, and sure enough, if you look, I get the two answers with a comma between them and no comma at the end. So again, in essence, what I do is I, in this case, is going to have a value of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The last value for I is going to be count of this array, add end 1, minus 1. So as long as i is less than that last value, I want to output a comma. All right, so we now have the server side done. We can stick a fork in it. It's done. We're ready to move on to the client side. Now, we also know the client side needs to make the request to look like this. All right. And ideally, we want that client side um, to be dynamic, where we don't have to change our code if we add another question. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put the include file in here, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to make sure that my client side code, first of all, forms a request to look like this. So. I can actually close out of the server side code. I can open up the client side code. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the include file in. Since this include file doesn't output anything, I can pretty much put it wherever I want. I talked about how the, the client side was sort of half ready to handle multiple questions, but not completely ready. So the outputting of the form part should work correctly, because we already have a loop in there for that. What we have to make sure of is the forming of the request works right. So right now, the request is simply looking for answer 0, and it's adding the value of get element by ID answer 0. Now, we could add on to this hard-coded an ampersand and go in and do the same thing, you know, answer 1 equals plus document get element by ID answer 1. But we don't want to do that because we want this to be responsive to the value of the... Um, the value of the um, include file. Keep in mind
line, at this point we're in JavaScript. So the page has already been loaded. The include file is in PHP. So the include file was used in creating this page. But the JavaScript can't access the include file because that lives on the server that's used to create the page. The, the code in the um, client side can only respond to what's already on the page. So I'm going to go and I'm going to create a variable here. That's going to contain a number of questions. All right. Now you might ask, gee, if I change the array, I'm going to have to change that number of questions. And you're absolutely right. After we get this working, we'll have a workaround so that we don't have to change the number of questions. But I don't want to muddy the waters right now. So I'm going to have a loop that says for i equals 0 i is less than questions i plus plus I'm going to form my URL initialize it by grade.php question mark. Each time through the loop I'm going to add on the new set of answers here. So I'm going to take my URL and I'm going to add to it the word answer plus the value of i equal equals and add on to it the value of document get element by id blah 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 Now that looks like a mouthful. Let's look at this one piece at a time. I'm forming the URL for each question that I have. That's what the loop means. I'm repeating this code for each question I have. I'm taking what was in the URL before. So initially it starts out with simply grade.php question mark. That's the start of the URL. I'm adding to that the word answer. I'm adding to that the value of i. Well, the first time through the loop, what's the value of i? Zero. Second time, it's going to be one. Third time, it's going to be two, and so on. The key to understanding this is remembering that when there's something in quotes, you get literally that, exactly that. When there's something not in quotes, you get the value of the variable. So in this case, this is a variable. So we're taking the contents of the variable. We're tacking on the end of it the word answer. We're tacking on the word to that the variable i, which contains the number of the answers, starting with zero. We're adding on to that a hard-coded equal sign. And we're adding on to that the value of the element in the form that corresponds to that number of questions. That's a mouthful, right? I want to test this before I go any further. So how can I test this? I can make an alert box that contains the URL. And that way I can get in and I can see exactly what the URL is. I know what the URL should look like. It should look something like this. I can test to see if the URL 
actually matches the format that it's supposed to be in. So, I'm going to save this. And I'm going to copy that to my server. There's my quiz. Only shows one question. All right. And I'm going to get rid of the dog for now, sorry to say. So let's go in here. We got a problem. We're not showing the, the number, the proper number of questions. Well, farther down shouldn't be doing the old. Oh, I have. I put the include file in, but I still had the old array. So once I put the include file in, I can get rid of the old array. All right. So now we can copy it over, and we should get the good results. We didn't even have to get rid of the dog. Okay, so now I'm going to put in some debug code here. And we use, and as I put debug code in here, where do you think the problem lies? Where do I need to check? Do I need to check in my PHP code or my HTML and JavaScript code? We have a vote for JavaScript. I'm going to start first look at my PHP code. Why? Well, PHP code is used to generate the web page. So this web page is getting generated with only one question when it ought to be generated with two questions. So something in the PHP is not right as it is generating only one question instead of two. So I'm going to echo the number of questions to see what it thinks the number of questions are. I have a feeling I know what I did. I think I copied the wrong file over. And sure enough, there is the, it's showing two questions now and my debug code was wrong. You are absolutely right. It is definitely a Monday. Because yeah, I think what I did is when I came back, grade was highlighted. So I had copied over the grade.php instead of the index.php.
And there we have, okay, there we have the two questions. So finally, we can test to make sure that it's going to form the query string correctly. So I can put in my answers. This isn't going to work yet, right? Because I don't think we have code in here to process more than one question, all right? But I should at least be able to see it forming the URL. When I hit alert, and the URL is mostly correct. Answer 0 equals 6, answer 1 equals 12, all right? What's wrong with that? Well, there's no ampersand between there. Well, I can do sort of the same thing that I did here where I can add the ampersand if it is not the last trip through the loop. So if I is less than questions minus one I can add to the URL an ampersand. So now I type in 6 and 12 and hit grade, and the URL looks the way that I would expect it to look. Grade, question mark, grade.php, question mark, answer 0 equals 6, ampersand, answer 1 equals 12. Well, that's a darn good question. Why does it say wrong? All right. Well... What I'm going to do is I'm going to now look at the output that this is getting. So I'm going to alert and again in addition to it being Monday I want to show you the process of going through and thinking through and debugging and all that when things happen. So the fact that I'm putting alerts in here is a good way to track down exactly what's going on. All right, it's it's better to the, it's better to do something like this to look in your code and put an alert to see the actual values that the program is looking at than simply staring at the code. Simply staring at the code, you really need to get lucky to get the right answer. So I'm going to put in an alert to show me the value of the response text. Remember, the response text is the response of the server. So, if I go and copy that over, so we're formulating the URL correctly. That's what that tells us. We remember from our previous test that if we give the server-side script the URL in this format, it gives me the answer that I'm expecting. All right? We could actually test that again if we wanted to, but I'm sure nothing has changed from that. Ah. Here's the error. Why BR, notice, undefined index, answer 1 in C, blah, 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 on line 6. So I'm actually getting back a server-side scripting error. All right. So let's look and try to debug that. My answer should just be a Y and a comma and an N, but it's not.
So, let's go and look at that. Answer equals rest request answer. And my error was what? Indefined in undefined index answer one in B C I net oh. I know what the problem is. I'm forming the URL correctly in my string. But I'm still hard coding the URL here in my open. So I need to replace this with URL. Okay. I created a variable for the URL, but I still had my old hard coded value for the URL. Therefore, I wasn't passing answer one to it. So let's go and check this out. All right, there's the URL it's sending over. There's the response it's getting back, y comma y. That looks like it's correct, right? But it's still telling me it's wrong. All right? This one's a little easier to explain. Why is it telling me it's wrong? Well, look at what the question is asking here. Is response text equal to Y? No. What is response text equal to? It's equal to Y comma Y. So this code was not wrote, writ, written to take into account the multiple questions. This is simply looking for one result from the server, whether this question was right or wrong. So we should be able to easily fix that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just, does that mean you, if you put a response text, that split? Right. What we have to do is we have to split our answer into an array and then loop through that array. All right. So I can say results equals split HTTP response text comma. Then I can say for I equals zero, I less than results dot count, or is it length? is length. I plus plus, I'm going to repeat this block of statements over and over. So I'm not going to just do it once, I'm going to do it multiple times. Now, I'm not going to look at the whole response text. I'm going to look at results, sub i, look at each one in turn. And I'm not going to just put the answer here or there. I'm going to go in and 
add on the index of the answer. So I put it in the, in the proper place because each one of these questions has an answer error string. So now let's run this and see what we get. There's a query string, there's the results that we get back, and we get absolutely nothing. All right. Let me review how to split an array. Maybe that's my mistake. I, I did my split statement incorrectly. It should be this. And there we go, we got it correct. Yay. Put in a wrong answer. Now that we have it working, we should take out the debug code that we put in there. So our debug code were our alerts and our other alert. try to solve the one thing that I don't like about this. What do you think the one thing I don't like about this is? The one thing I don't like about this is this statement right here. All right. Why do you think I don't like about that? What do you think I don't like about that? It's hard-coded in. Hard in, which means if I add a question in that array, I got to go and change that. DRY is the programmer's motto, do not repeat yourself. And if I make a change here, I have to make a corresponding change here. We're going to have to figure out a way for that to work. Remembering that JavaScript can't access code on the PHP side. So the arrays are defined in PHP, but this needs to be done in JavaScript. So the question then is how can we get that piece of data over to the JavaScript side of things. So that's where we'll, we'll, we'll take a minute to review this to make sure that we all understand this and then we'll extend it to do that. All right? Okay, that's all I have. We'll see you over in lab.